Well, hello everyone at the .NET conference. Hello, hello. Hi everyone. Hey everyone. Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the .NET conference. Let's talk about .NET. It's going to be crazy time. A ridiculous amount of awesome .NET content. We've made so many changes and improvements. If you're afraid of monsters, please be careful. We're going to go all over the place. .NET loves WebAssembly. Blaze up. Cloud Native. C Sharp. It's Maui time. Put your phone away. Get into the gritty a little bit, show you some of the new features. We have an amazing session coming up. Amazing, fun, productive, and powerful. Let's get started with this. Welcome, .NET friends. It's another episode. This is the On.NET Live show. Our mission here is to empower all of you, the collective .NET community, to achieve more. Um, just wanted to quickly point out before we move into the show, do not miss .NET Conf. You saw the bumper uh, that David flashed up there. November 14th. Tune in 14th through the 16th and just soak up all the knowledge like a sponge. Um, also like to give a shout out to the folks in the chat. I see talk of cheese from Ryan Bell. I see uh, our friend Cyber Onyx is from Wisconsin. These are my people. Um, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Also shout out to all of the other folks in chat. We have representation from all over the globe. Um, .NET truly is that tech that unites all of us. Welcome to the show. So who am I? I'm your host, Scott Addy. And I'm joined today by co-hosts Myra Wenzel and David Pine. Hello. We are uh, super excited to have today's guest on the show, Victoria Dolzhenko. Uh, Victoria, could you briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Uh, yes, of course. I'm team leader in one of blockchain uh, projects. I have more than 10 years experiences in building backend system uh, using .NET. I'm really big fan of it, and I'm proud to be here. Yeah. Awesome, and we're excited to have you here, as I mentioned. So, Victoria, my understanding is today we are going to talk about uh, implementing background jobs with .NET for tasks like processing queues, um, and we're going to throw Postgres into the mix, from what I understand. So why don't we jump right into it and look at what you have to share with the audience today? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do I, it. <laughs> I, I want to introduce why. Yes, yes, please go ahead. The show is yours. Why I built this. Uh... I think we I may have lost, lost Victoria. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, let's remove the, the 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 screen for a bit and see. If you... Ah. No. We are experiencing technical difficulties, friends. Thank you for hey, your patience. <laughs> um, this is live. It's live. <laughs> I, I want to point out how good of a job you did on the transitions, David. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to time it just right because we've got like the little countdown things. And yeah. We Thank have you. a question about why are so many Microsoft employees named Scott? So while we wait for <laughs> to come back. Yes. Our third good Scott. Problem, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's miss our money and it's very bad. Yeah. So Victoria, uh, let's let's just rewind because we lost you since the beginning of your explanation. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So um, can you try to <laughs> say <Yeah>. why? Um, <laughs> okay. Again. Yes. No, no, no. It's okay. Yeah, I understand. It's I'm in Costa Rica and very hot, and maybe my PC doesn't like it. Yeah, I I, I can't understand it. So okay. Again. Uh, Again, I can't imagine any big system without back, uh, backend scheduling tasks. Yes, 
uh, it can be receiving data from third party system. It can be, I don't know, cleaning any operation data or it can be some background calculation of something. Yes, we need backgrounds, scheduling tasks everywhere, <laughs> I think. So uh, around seven years ago, I faced with this problem and I uh, don't didn't search any solution for it. So I built it myself. Now I understand that we have uh, solutions like Quartz, like others. Yes, it's very good, but uh, my solution is simple and you can use it every day, day by day. Uh, okay, uh, next. So uh, our systems, it's, uh, they build on Microsoft. I knew she was going to say Microsoft. The rest of it, I don't know what happened from there. Is this where we lean on AI to fill in the details? No, I I've got faith. She's going to be right back in a few. You're muted, Myra. By the Check way. through. So it's mean that. Okay, now I'm I'm muted. Um, no, I was gonna say let's ask her to stop sharing, and we can try to maybe present from our side when she's back. Hopefully, she'll be back. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep, uh, we'll give that a try. Let me see. Do we by chance have the repository that she was going to share, friends? I don't think so. Let's see. Hi again, Hi. Victoria. Hi again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. But it's yeah. Uh, I... Let's not do screen share then. <laughs> um, okay, okay. You talk. Maybe you share the repo with us on our chat, and then we can try to share from our side. And then we um, can just talk to it that way, maybe. Mm, okay, I will share my screen again. And I started a lot of funds in my PC and maybe it will work. If something go wrong, I will ask you open my code, source code, uh, and then I will talk about it. Yes, without yeah. screening my share. Okay. So we, uh, we got the part of the why, but then when you started talking about your second point, then that's when we lost you. Okay, head. second point about restarting or failure. Okay, uh, let's imagine that one pod get one task and then something go wrong and uh, it fail. So uh, second pod should understand that, oh, something go wrong and I should get this task. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's second problem. Third problem is that I want to change uh, my task without releases. For example, I want to start some task immediately, or I want to change schedule of this task, or I want to create new task again. Yeah, it's third problem. Uh, and fourth problem is that I need task templates. It means that... Uh, for example, again, about my job, we get prices for currencies from third party systems. Uh, for example, euro currency to dollar or Bitcoin to dollar. Yeah. Euro price change it just one time per day, but Bitcoin can change more than one time per second. Uh, and of course, scheduling of this task shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be um, equal, yeah, scheduling. So I need start get Bitcoin uh, one time per minute and Euro one time per day. But it's one task, yes, get prices from for some currency. Uh, yeah, so it's that mean that I need task templates. Okay, go to implementation. Uh, okay, first of all, I want to show you how it's used, and then I will show you how I it's created. Okay, uh, how it's using. 
in program uh you should i need i think i will screen it okay yeah can you bump up a little bit uh-huh okay maybe yeah. this <laughs> okay um Okay, it's add to DI, of course, and uh, you should put here two params. It's a task factory and it's uh, assembly of your tasks. Uh, okay, uh, I, should, I should explain how it works. First, uh, it's creating a schema in your database with uh, four tables and one of the tables it's called tasks and here we have type uh what does mean uh what is type uh again about templates uh get prices from third party system it's one of template for example zero template and you can create in more than one task with this template so uh we should understand actually not we but workers should understand uh what implementation of this uh this template uh it should uh use so uh so we need factor for it okay uh let's back to the uh, our example and and what and program again okay we go to our factory we send our assembly because i like when all my uh classes go through di because we need some injected some uh dependencies so yeah and of course we need to put postgres connection string to it yeah because it's uh based on postgres okay uh in example, I have, of course, uh, task types, yeah? Uh, I have here only two tasks, it's say hello and say something. I will show you what different between it. Uh, and I have factory. Uh, in factory, I have uh, only one function. It's from our interface, iBook Worker Test Factory, and here, it's just switch uh, which go through our uh, enum type and get implementation from our service provider. Yes, because we use DI here. Okay, and um, tasks. Say hello task. It's very simple. It's just implementation our IBEC worker task hacked and it's get logger, of course, and log information, hello. Uh, and second task, it's more interesting, it's get magic string from our mm, table. Uh, what does it mean? It's mean that it's get uh, uh, information, mm, yeah, magic string information. I will show you it in, uh, back worker again and table tasks. Yeah. Here we have column magic string. And here we can, for example, about again prices, we can put here Bitcoin or Ethereum or something like that. And we will get it here in our implementation of this uh, interface. And uh, this very simple task will just uh, log information like magic stream. Okay. Um, real, and, real, real quick, yeah. um, Victoria, we do have a mm -hmm. couple of questions coming in. So I just wanted to take this moment to ask. Okay. Um, one of our viewers from uh, YouTube is asking if we're learning about hang fire. And I know that this is not a hang fire talk. It yeah. is not dissimilar from what hang fire offers though, right? Yeah, I understand. Uh, yes, of course. As I say uh, before, it uh, I really like open NuGet and see not only one or two or five projects which suit me. Yes, I I understand that Headpire can or Quartz or other can do like my backworker. Yes, something like this, but. It doesn't mean that we should cancel other projects. Yeah, we should 
uh, get shoes, it's very good. Yeah. yeah. So in yeah. which in this case, uh, which is the package that you are using? Uh, it's my package. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's called, package. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah I it's a good package. <laughs> I, I did put a link to your repo in chat. People were asking for that as well. Um, and then this was a related question to earlier when you were showing those tasks being returned from the factory. They were asking if it was fire and forget. Um, I was tempted to reply. It doesn't look like that's actually like the task type, but instead your own interface that you're implementing to represent a task or a body of work. Is that correct? Uh... If I understand you clearly, <laughs> I think yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's that's all the questions we yeah. have right now. So keep I going. understand that we have a lot, not a lot actually, only three or four projects like my or my project like that mm -hmm. project. Yes, but I don't see something wrong with we've get more than four projects. Uh, oh, absolutely. Can, I agree. Yeah. So. Why not? <laughs> and that's why we love to celebrate the community and the work yeah. that people are doing because uh, there are different solutions to different to the same problem, um, and maybe things that one solution will offer that the, the other doesn't. Um, and so, yeah, we love to learn about what the community is doing. And I love that Victoria came and like uh, signed up for the show, and we love to see other people from the community do the same as well. Yeah, yes, and I I don't see some problem with it. So, okay, uh, let's go. Again, it's very simple. Maybe it's not like, I don't know, create blockchain on .NET or <laughs> create your own chat GPT on .NET. Yes, it's simple. It's very uh, useful and you can use it. You can create your own based on it. Why not? I don't see something bad. Okay, let's go to implementation. Uh, okay, I used here uh, Dapper. Why not Entity Framework? Because I like Dapper when I build something light because I can see my SQL queries uh, and Entity Framework, it's heavy, it's big. Yeah, it's powerful of course, but sometimes it's like, I don't know, like elephant <laughs> in my very small something. <laughs> yeah, so Dapper, it's micro RAM. I use it, yeah, when I build something very micro. Okay, uh, what, what started? Uh, no, 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 this. Uh, I think we should from start from collection extension. Uh, and okay, uh, backwork, uh, backworker manager, it's singleton, it's one class which mm, manage all of this. Yeah, that's why it's called like this. And uh, okay, I add transient this factory, of course, and then I add all uh, classes uh, from assemblers. Yeah, it's very close to mediator, for example, library, if somebody learn it. Um, and I add at hosted service. Yeah, and we will go to it. Yeah, hosted service, it's back worker and yeah, here. And here it's very simple. It start migrations and it start our back worker manager. And of course, stop if we need it. Uh, yeah, I see it. It's well, yeah, I think. And back worker manager. Yeah, it's more interesting. Uh, first of all, I use ADB manager. Why not? It's I something repository or I first repository, second repository, like uh, a lot of people use. Yes, because it's again, it's very simple. <laughs> So I don't need here more classes than one to uh, uh, work with database, yeah? So I don't, okay, uh, you can separate it if, it if you want, but it's 
yeah, it's light solution. You don't need it actually here. Okay, uh, when it starts, it's of course log information again. And here we have um, unstoppable. <laughs> no, of course, stoppable, but unstoppable. <laughs> Okay, loop when we uh, run task a scene. Uh, and it's run one time per one second. Uh, I remember time around five years ago when this code, it's, uh, I don't have it. And here I get error. For example, I think it was some problem with connection with Postgre. And it was, uh, you know, it's work very fast. So it was around 500,000 uh, logs per second. <laughs> and it was terrible. <laughs> so there was no delay. It was just yeah, yeah, as yeah. quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was terrible. Uh, our DevOps engineer uh, don't like me. <laughs> I didn't like me after it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, run task sync. Uh, what happened here? We go to our DB manager and this operation is one. Why it's one? Because I should log a table in Postgre and in this transaction, I should put information that this uh, task um started to work with uh this port started to work with task yeah you remember our first problem that uh two ports one time one task it's bad <laughs> so um we will go to this code but not now okay we get our run task uh, if we don't have it we just return and again and we will we'll, uh, wait one second again and again and again and again okay go uh, then we go to our task factory get our task uh, then we save log about that we start it it's need um, for I can show you yeah yeah mm, to be tables okay uh, task log table it put information this uh, table. Yeah, that was started. We need this information um, for uh, for second start. Yes, it's scheduling. We should start it, for example, one time per minute. And of course, we should remember when we started it in last time. OK, uh, go again. Then we run it. And then we save log that we stop run it and unlock back worker task. What is unlock? It means that we remove a row from this table, active tasks. Okay. Uh, yeah, here, uh, interesting function from DB manager. It's getting log start back worker task as seen. Uh, and we will go to it. I think we will go here, Cause Greece and DB Manager implementation. Uh, yeah, this one. What is perform DB action async? It's simple, very easy function to work with. Uh, again, I know that entity framework get you unit work and all of these patterns to work with repository. But again, it's very simple and light implementation. So yeah, it's very light function uh, with yeah, Postgres, I think here. Uh, yeah, the B action runner. It's just what it's just happened. Uh, we started our connect. Of course, if something were wrong, we dispose it and we open it. And attention, we start our DB action uh, or DB transaction, uh, transaction, and we will commit it or roll back if something will wrong inside our DB action. What does it mean here in get and log start back worker task? It means that here we started our connection and we started our uh, transaction. So when we um, lock our active tasks, it means that it will unlock when we stop doing this action. Yes, the B action, because we will uh, commit 
our transaction or roll back it. So uh, in the end of this action, our transaction will complete it. So it's mean we will uh, unlock our active task. Okay, then I just get task. Uh, logs, it's neat, and active task, it's neat me for understand that uh, we should, what task we should run. Okay, then I go through task, and uh, this, it's very interesting function. No, very interesting, but interesting <laughs> function. So, uh, if it's need to start, I just put a uh, row to active task because we should understand when uh that our pod started to work with it yeah and okay go to need to start uh, function real real quick uh victoria uh -huh. we do have a couple more questions here and i okay. just wanted to make sure we address those first okay okay so okay. one of the first ones was is there a dashboard that comes with this uh, back worker. No, why? Uh, dashboard, it's your UI, it's your, okay, you work with database. Yes, you can use uh, any database client to connect with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't see, you don't need it. Why? It's I, REST, of course, it's new service in your Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. It's actually two services because because you will need a uh, service for jobs mm -hmm. and service for your API and service for your UI. Maybe you can uh, attach REST and uh, your UI, but it's not so good solution yet. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that, so I think they're probably alluding to the fact that like Hangfire, for example, it has a dashboard and it kind of represents like the 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 different states of those background things because they're not necessarily something that's otherwise observable why why you need it you uh... <laughs> <laughs> again it's it's very simple yeah. hand fire it's it's good it's powerful of course mm -hmm. sure and yeah yes sure but it's uh, not light you know it's yeah. heavy it's a lot of options mm -hmm. and yeah why so, like, how do you keep track of the sort of like how they're working yeah. like the service like what services are running and like what, where do you check the logger like is it in the database that the loggers are saved or like is it uh, why, why I need logs of it? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> not, well, not why, but like, is the logger configured to go to the database as well? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. You, you don't need uh, any UI for it. No, of course you need it, but uh, you want uh, you can use, for example, data grips or uh, Postgre, how is it, so admin, PG admin, oh, yes, it's free, or something like that, and it's UI too. Why not? Do you understand me? It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, yeah, that definitely answers that question. Um, so the other question was uh, Is it possible to use an in memory um, oh, sorry, uh, database? I, I, Ah, it's very good. I, I like this question. Yeah. Uh, and again, to Kubernetes. Yep. Uh, and okay, you will use it in memory, but it's only one pod. Yeah, it's only one uh, application, but you have a lot of pods. Yes. And how it will connect it to each other. You will, you can use Redis. Yes, I, I think about it. Redis, it's very fast, powerful. I think so. But uh, it's very bad to lock something. <laughs> it's really that, yes. And you can use queries in Redis or in Kafka or other. But what happened if uh, one of your tasks, one of your pods started uh, work with task, and then it's uh, this pod crashed, and so what? In query, we don't have a uh, row, yes, in Redis. Uh, and your pod crashed, it means that your job 
never to be uh, running to, for example, if you need to run task one time per day and your pod crash it, it means that you should wait uh, one day to start other uh, time of your task. It makes sense. Do you understand me a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so it's memory. It's not so good solution for it when you use uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, and it's red is not so good when you need to lock some information. So <laughs> you need database for it. Uh, yeah, it is. Of course, you can use not only Postgres, but Postgres. It's more. Uh, uh, often useful in not only .NET applications. Of course, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, but it's, uh, and you can use it too and just attach it this uh, um, uh, get new version, back worker, create new version and okay, use it, why not? <laughs> so and I I saw on NuGet that you have a package called Back Worker. So that's what the code that you're showing today. Is that something that others can take advantage as well? Uh, again, I create package. Yeah. I, again, I under, I, I uh, hope that I understand you right. Okay, I create page package and I put it in NuGet. Mm -hmm. Actually, I had first version of it around. Oh, I don't know, three years ago, and I opened <laughs> NuGet recently to prepare to this .NET Live, and I see that 500 uh, downloads <laughs> was, and I don't know who, <laughs> who did it, <laughs> but but I uh, it's uh, show us that people need it, not a lot of people, of course, but they need it, really need okay. it, yeah. Uh, and as I can see, all you and your watchers, they know hand fire. But, uh, but what else? Only one package? No, we should get more than one. It's not so good when we have only one solution for our problem. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and do you like, do you have any other? plans for for the package like or do you want contributions to the project like like what do you have in store no if somebody need if somebody wanted of course we uh, i will improve it maybe somebody one uh, give this back worker more powerful but uh, I don't need it because <laughs> I use Postgres and I use it with Postgres. It's all. It's all that I need. But if somebody use Microsoft SQL Server again or other databases, okay, connect it, go to databases, at a uh, folder to here, okay, implement it, IBAC Worker Migration IDB Manager and go and use it. It's very simple, yeah. So again, so, it's very simple. Uh huh. So, so could you see um, yourself like accepting pull requests uh, where you know external community members might be interested in implementing these various interfaces? Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> why not? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, any questions? I like, yeah, no, I think like just in general, I feel like for open source projects, like the first thing before you do a pull request is that you open an issue to discuss that feature, right? Like so that Victoria can comment on and say, yeah, like that's something I would take because uh, sometimes what I see is that people go not for easy fixes, but like for large chunks of work that they go and submit a PR without the issue, without discussing with the project owner. So that's something I would recommend for anyone before they do any work is to have that approval that, okay, that that's something they would want for the project. That's a good point, Myra. I think a lot of times project maintainers have a vision for their project and it's not necessarily written down anywhere. Um, yeah. So again, to your point, always create that issue before putting in the effort to create a, a PR. Um, 
while I have the mic here, um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions that have come up. Um, mm -hmm. Selfishly, I'm interested in the answer um, to this one, and I'll put it up on the screen. So, Victoria, over in your DB Manager class, you had what I what I think I saw were three different uh, select queries. And so the question here is asking why raw SQL instead of something like link? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's because uh, it's my personal. <laughs> it's really that. Yeah, I understand that maybe it's more useful, <laughs> but I um, maybe it's old school. I don't know. <laughs> But it's just personal, it's all. Yeah, it's really, it's not decision because, oh, it's more powerful or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's it's just personal, it's all. Yeah, your, your preference, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I just wanted to speak to the fact that this is literally how, like, most of the open source projects that I've been involved have started, right? It's been mm -hmm. out of kind of, like, selfish interest, like, oh, there's this problem or there's this way of doing things that I want to follow that doesn't necessarily exist or there's stuff that that's out there that I would struggle to use. So I'll come up with something myself and just put it out there and, um, you know, and see if people are interested, but it's usually just my self interest at first that I'm trying to appease. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of the situation where, you know, we're seeing back worker and, our viewers are realizing that, oh, this isn't dissimilar from other things that might be out there, but it bakes in lots of your opinions and your experiences and your preferences. And that's perfectly valid. And I love it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, uh, there's the other you... question. Yeah. I had <laughs> like, I think it came up earlier in terms of stress tests and benchmarks. And I think there was a related question later on about, um, I think how many requests and transactions per second it can handle. So like, have you done any kind of stress test or a benchmark or like how okay. powerful this little library is? Okay, it's very good questions. And I say, uh, if shirt, no, but... <laughs> First of all, uh, back workers, yes, in your system, uh, what kind, uh, what, what, what kind of and what count of this you need, really needs? Yes, it's not, I think it's not more than 100, yeah? Well, I never see, uh, of course, uh, maybe somebody have service which have more than 100, but I think it's not microservices architecture B, yes? So uh, first point that you, uh, if you good architecture, you don't have, you will not have uh, more than around 100 tasks. Okay, uh, okay, about my current job, I have around 30 uh, tasks on one database in one services with three ports and it's okay. Uh, we work with uh, seven blockchains. Yes, sometimes they uh, not so good work. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them. And yes, of course it's problems to send uh, any transactions and we have we work with not only i don't know ethereum and bitcoin of course we work with year c20 year c721 or nft all of this and uh again no more than 30 no more than 100 if you need you can of course get stress tests but uh i can say that my stress test for this library, it's real work. <laughs> yeah, it's real work in my current job, in my last job, in my last before it, and it's work always, and it's never to, you know, fail or something like that. It's stable work. And it seems like those are like critical, like things that need to keep running uh, and like 
be updating for the business um, to to consume and like like you were saying the Bitcoin transactions, you need those currency updates uh, quite frequently. Mm, mm, okay. Right? Uh, okay. Uh, back worker, it's package which uh, started our jobs. But our jobs, it's inside uh, inside your application, yes? And yeah. if you need some new task, you just create new implementation of interface. Uh, and now I want to back to tests. And I agree with uh, people who want tests. And actually, I should write it. <laughs> before before show with you but okay you can think about it like about startup <laughs> very fast startup uh now in here i just want i remember me eight year ago yeah or, or seven year ago when i never know how it's work how it should be work and now i just want to show some people, of course, not all, of course, senior developers would say, oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I understand that uh, here, not only senior developers, yes? And maybe it will be useful for people not who don't know how it's work, yeah? How it's uh, built. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Victoria, I'm uh, I'm looking at your project on GitHub, and I know earlier we were talking about Dapper versus Entity Framework. Um, mm -hmm. I I see a it looks like you're using the NPG SQL provider for EF. Is that being used anywhere in the project or no? I, I see a reference. Ah, uh, CS proj file. Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, I just wondered. If Hey, you know, maybe you Again, it's not uh, it's not a project for pay. It's just handmade sure. something handmade. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess where I'm going with that question is, um, it looks like maybe you have compared those two options, Dapper versus um, Entity Framework Core. Um, and I know earlier you'd mentioned. Uh, you described Entity Framework as sort of an elephant, uh, not quite as performant is what I'm assuming. Were there other things you saw that that led you to Dapper as the ultimate solution? Uh, of course, you can use Entity Framework if you need, but I recommend you create other um, GitHub project and other uh, package for it. For example, uh, it will uh, backworker runner, backworker ASP, and backworker entity framework Postgres, and, and backworker, I don't know, Dapper, Postgres, something like that. Uh, that yes. Because um, if you use Dapper, you shouldn't get Entity Framework package to your project, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions, or I can continue. <laughs> I have. There is one more, uh, oh. and you mentioned like that you have some things that keep running. So someone is asking, like, how do I run the background jobs endless? Like so. How do you keep them running? Ah, okay. Oh, it's Zoom. Um, I love it. Don't net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can explain. Uh, now I work with two technology. I work with Node.js, Nest.js framework, and with .NET. And .NET, oh my gosh, <laughs> I really love it. So it's magic of .NET. Okay, go, and I will explain you. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, go to our back worker and it just it just hosted services yeah and our application will hosted services back worker hosted service which uh, um, keep yeah yeah good word uh, good word keep our uh, endless cycle yeah just 
So when started hosted services, this endless start, uh, endless loop started to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we can go to uh, our tasks and I will show you uh, settings more, maybe better. Yes. Uh, first of all, of course, we have version info. Uh, we need it for, um, okay, we work with database. Of course, we have migration and all of the stuff, and we uh, should, uh, should have information about what migration was last. Uh, uh -huh. Again, in active task, we have uh, roles about what task running now in other pods. Okay, in task log, we have information when it's uh, started and ended in last time. And how about task? Okay, here we have, uh, of course, ID. Uh, I use it in other tables. We have here name. This name can be any. It's useful for you because its task can be something like get price for Bitcoin and name should uh, say get task for Bitcoin or get price for Bitcoin. Okay, type of course, uh, active magic string uh, and then it's about scheduling. First of all, it's milliseconds repeat period. It's how often uh, this task will be run. Yeah, we need it. Uh, but um, attention that <laughs> if you set here uh, period less than one second, it uh, will not be work. Yeah, uh, because our endless cycle, it's... Uh, where is it? It's here, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it starts one time per second. So if you set here, for example, 100 milliseconds, it will not work, yeah? Uh, it will, but it will start one time per second. Okay, this one. Oh. <laughs> uh, last time I used it uh, around four years ago, yeah. And I think maybe it's not so good solution, but I use it and I think maybe, oh, it's maybe will useful in, uh, in the future. Okay, what does it mean? For example, you need send notification to your um, customers. Yes, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, because in other time they are asleep. <laughs> so uh, this means uh, if you put here 10 a.m. and put here 8 p.m., it means that your task will run only on this period of time. Okay, uh, milliseconds restart delay. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting option. I uh, needed, okay, uh, imagine that our milliseconds repeat period will uh, one time per minute, but uh, your task will go uh, for more than one minute, for example, five minutes, yes? And a uh, question, you should start it immediately after five minutes, or you should wait some time be between it, yeah? Uh, okay, and this, guy this millisecond restart delay says uh how long do you you should wait before started it again uh okay and restart crash delay it's uh say other ports that okay other port uh get uh this task five minutes ago uh and I wait five minutes and something wrong. Uh, first pod don't, didn't stop it. So I can get it again. Uh, and here it's very big danger <laughs> for me. Again, <laughs> it was on my <laughs> experience in work. Uh, one of blockchain, uh, I set milliseconds repeat period one minute. 
and said here crash delay five minutes but one time it was new year time and ton blockchain and it was very busy so my task work more than five minutes it's not crash <laughs> didn't crash but it just worked really five minutes because my uh, um okay uh settings was bad <laughs> and other tasks started it and we really sent money double time because i was miss so uh this uh it's very important to think about how you uh use it uh-huh okay uh maybe any questions or i can show something else um we we do have a question uh, i'll pop it up on the screen um so the casing that you're using for the property names here is that a requirement um from dapper or is that just your preference to use all lowercase oh uh, again it's yeah uh some of my colleagues hate me <laughs> because i you know uh uh, when you create SQL questions, uh, queries, yes, uh, you should say, for example, if we uh, name, for example, uh, magic string, yeah, not uh, like my magic string, but like magic string, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, get selected, select. Uh, mm, I don't know, table, yes. And here, if it will just magic string, I can put this, yeah? Okay, from uh, task, tasks, yeah, back worker, namespace, st, yeah? But if it's named like here, you should put in your queries something like that. Yeah, and for me, it's unusual, uh, unusual, or oh, unusual, unusual, unusual. <laughs> uh, so you see, it's if you will work with, for example, entity framework, or okay. Uh, wait, wait. You I'm, can, I was, can you go? Can you go back real quick? I was confused by uh -huh. that. Okay, the, okay, the okay, okay. Why is the quotes around that necessary? Uh, because if you uh, ask uh, Postgres without it, it show you, oh my, I don't know what is it. <laughs> yeah, you can try. Hmm. Unfortunately, my internet, I, I can't uh, show okay. you it, yeah. but it will that, yeah. So that's why I use it. I know that I can put something like uh, here, yeah, uh, column and name magic string like this, but my field will magic string uh, like this. I know that I can use it. But again, it's light and simple and it's personal. Uh, we can change it and any who want create something like that can change it. Yeah, for, yeah. So it's just personal. It's not something like, you know, it's, you should do like that. So of course not. It's <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, maybe something else or I can show something. No questions. Okay. So we've got about five minutes left. Um, uh -huh. So at this point in the show, we should aim to just wrap things up. Are there any um, any tips, any resources that you would share with guests that want to start using your Backworker project in their solutions? Uh, only NuGet, and you put just Backworker. Nobody used this <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> name of it so <laughs> you can put back worker and it will my project yeah and how it's work you can see again in sample um yeah it's very simple yeah very simple to use it 
Oh, so awesome. there you have it. So this sample here is is a good place to start, is what I'm hearing. Go ahead, yes. David. Yeah, I was just gonna uh, say that there was some general questions about the repo um, and, and its open source state. I did add a few notes um, and, and things as you were presenting here, Victoria. So thank you. Um, well, some of our viewers were asking for a README uh, at the root of the repo so that they would have like just a, a little bit more of a gist um, of, of kind of what the repo is for um, and some other things like it, uh, how it's licensed. Um, I noticed that in your project file, it actually says MIT, but there wasn't a license in the repo itself. Uh, other common things are like a code of conduct or like issue templates. So I provided some links uh, that we shared out here in the video. Um, and I really appreciate uh, all the, the work you've put into this. So thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, in our show, we'll be taking a break for uh, two weeks. Uh, yep. And we're going to be back like uh, next week is done at Conf and students on on Monday. And we have... Um, then we have Thanksgiving here, weekend here in the, in the United States. And so we'll be back after that uh, on November 27th. Yep. Thanks for Myra. Yeah. November 27th, uh, we'll have Daniel Costea on the show. Uh, that topic will be uh, Microsoft semantic kernel, obviously, as it relates to C sharp. Um, with that being said, I, sh I should probably wrap the show up here. We're almost at time. I just wanted to thank our viewers and thank Victoria uh, for your time today. If you wanted to check out other shows like the one you saw today, we do have recordings available out at dot slash live. Uh, but again, that's all we had for today. Um, thanks everyone. And we hope to see you again on November 27th. Yeah. And for, for folks wanting to know when we're back, uh, go to dot slash live or like our donet dot microsoft dot com the live TV page you'll see when our next shows are happening not just this one but across but we have a dedicated page for the show as well so you can see when you when we um, register the next one but we have like I think we're booked until February or March. So it's great to see. So if you want to get your show in, submit uh, submit your show. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thank you, friends. I'm going to play the uh, .NET Conf video again to hype us up on the way out. Thank you again, Victoria. And see you guys all later. Goodbye. Bye. Well, hello, everyone at the .NET Conference. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the .NET conference. Let's talk about .NET. It's going to be crazy time. A ridiculous amount of awesome .NET content. We've made so many changes and improvements. If you're afraid of monsters, please be careful. We're going to go all over the place. .NET loves WebAssembly. Blazer. I'm cloud native. C sharp. It's Maui time. Put your phone away. Get into the gritty a little bit. Show you some of the new features. We have an amazing session coming up. Amazing fun, productive, and powerful. Let's get started with this.